so Susan says she is willing to take minutes, which is great. Um, so I will call the meeting to order. And um, Judy, you, did you send, you didn't send out your minutes from June again, did you? No. Okay, well, I am prepared for once and I have brought them up thinking we might wanna look at them. Um, I had just one, I just, well, there's a typo <laughs> there. Yeah, I think I cut it out. Yeah. Um, but um, the only, really, it's just not important, but Tim Norris did not invite the Historical Commission. He invited- Yeah, you said that. I, I, maybe I did send them out. Anyway, I, I made both those corrections. So okay. I will send, I okay. will send you those. Okay. Um, so uh, may I have a motion to approve the minutes? Oh, I'll move we approve. Somebody second. Call for second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Yep. Aye. 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 Uh, you have to do roll call on Zoom. Oh, all right. Okay. Susan? Yes. Judy? Yes. Allison? <laughs> Allison? Allison? Uh, you're freezing up on me. That's why I'm. Oh, sorry. I'm going to have sorry. to move. I'm going to have to move. Sorry. You can get Alan in the meantime. Okay, Alan. Yes. Thanks, you, Judy. Yep. Alan. Yes. Okay. Um, and I approve them. I think we can consider them approved, even if Allison decides not to work four out of five. Um, so. I, I, I agree. Okay, good. Thanks. Um, the next item is the marijuana retail site application at 424 State Road. I sent the materials out quite a while ago in two swaths. Um, it's one of the sites at the intersection without an Irvings <laughs> at 116 and 5 and 10. Um, Judy, could you tell us where we are in the review pro the planning board and CBA process for it? The, the planning board is approved. Of, oh, we're getting terrible feedback. Who's? If you're not talking, mute yourself. The planning board has approved the site plan review. The ZBA met once and is asking for more information on parking. Um, there's an issue about, there are, this is what's known as the Sugarloaf Shops down at the other side across from the Irving Station, from both Irving Stations, I guess, actually. Um, there are two buildings there. They're separate buildings. They're under separate ownership. It's a condominium. There are 87 parking spaces and if fully used for retail and office space, it would require 113 parking spaces. Each of the two marijuana retailers who wants to be there is using part of their respective building and each has a desire to have a tenant in the other side and so there's this issue about do they need more parking spaces and who goes first and, and who's on first and who goes second and all of that. But um, planning board decided you had to look at the site plan application in front of you. It had enough parking spaces for its use. The existing, the other application, which is in the process of being constructed also has enough parking spaces for its use. So, but that's what the ZBA is debating or analyzing. There are no external changes to, to the property at all. So the, as far as I can tell, the only issues are odor, parking and traffic and security, I guess, other than odor, but, um, but I don't think there are any historical commission issues. So for the other site, the other, sorry, the other part of that. This is complex. the Greg 
This is the gray, gray building, not the red one. Okay. For the red one, then we sent our minimal letter saying, if you disturb anything that looks historical, historic rather, um, stop digging. I, I if they were I, planning, they were planning some changes to the fencing out front and some some um, grading changes in back. I think they were they were doing a few exterior minor landscaping things, which these people. doing any digging to find anything well and the and the building they propose to occupy is certainly not of historic value <laughs> anyway <Yeah. laughs> so it's you know it's a you know a, a faux happy shopping thing <laughs> you know um i uh I'm, I am happy to send no letter. We have had a practice of sending at least the minimal letter in response to almost any, any time we're asked to have an opinion, but we're not required to. So it's... Um, yeah, and, and the only people who actually solicit your input are the, are the planning board and they went ahead without it. Although it does, so I don't... I mean, if you wanted to send down an email saying we didn't find any problems with it, I think. But I, I think he's mentally moved on, so I wouldn't feel any need to. We, Historical Commission is routinely one of the few, few co committees that responds all the time. Others respond when they have an issue, but not necessarily otherwise. Uh, what would people like to do? I can't hurt to send them a general letter. I'm not sure what you said. We, we don't see any problem, but you'd have to send it to Don and, and we've already voted it. So, yeah. but you could. You can ignore it then. It's yeah, I don't know that, do that there's lot. anything for us to say in a letter, particularly if the planning board's already voted. So. All right, that's fine with me. Allison, are you all right with that? She's muted. Still muted, yeah. I'm fine with that, Donna. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. The feedback's okay. going away. It seems like there's a big, big delay. Um, so uh, some people who were at the Historical Society um, picnic a couple of weeks ago, uh, or maybe it was just last week, heard some of this. But um, the visit to, um, to Tim Norris's barn was very interesting. It is they've done a very nice job of retaining the historic detail, historical detail, um, both in the exterior and the interior. You can, the trim is all still on the facade, which you can see just by driving by it or getting out of your car and looking at it. They retained most of the structural interior. Um, he's been very careful. He told us proudly as soon as we got there that he has spent $70,000 already on the barn restoration and um, ha ha hasn't painted it yet. Uh, so the only thing that he's really changed is that on the rear entrance, they put in sort of garage doors, the sliding metal doors, so because they will be using the barn. Um, he um, told Neil <laughs> that he'd be happy to have the, hist uh, the Historical Society have a walkthrough of some sort when the painting is finished, which would be interesting, I think. He uh, was quite interested in the idea of dating the wood and he's kept some very big beams that they had to replace and was in touch 
two weeks ago to ask again for Bill Flint's um, contact information. So, uh, you know, it's nice. It's nice that he uh, has restored the barn. I said to him that that barn is not uh, written up and is not in the state register of um, significant structures. And he said, well, probably nothing in East Waitley is, <laughs> you know, uh, which isn't quite true. But, uh, and I said that we would be happy to do that when he wants to do it. So I guess I wanted to ask a little advice and, and obviously the time to do it would be after Bill Flint dates it, <laughs> you know, to get a better sense of its date. But I guess I'm uh, asking, those of you who have done this before, should we be uh, asking if we can get in and take some phone, some photographs of the structure before Norris moves all their stuff into the barn? Would that be a good idea, do you think? Can't hear it. Um, where is this barn, actually? It's on River. It's on River Road, and I don't remember the address. But if you go to the Norse Farm Complex, it is slightly south of that on the on the east side of the road. And it's a really big barn, and you cannot miss it because it's got okay. this sort of scalloped Pennsylvania Dutch looking decoration on the facade. I mean, having it's, lived in its entrance is just maybe ten feet from the road. It's very Close. Yeah. Uh, Judy, you were saying something, but you were muted, so we didn't hear it. Typically, you show exteriors, not interiors. No, that doesn't mean they. Now you're muted. <laughs> um, I, I'm so nervous about the feedback. I'm muting all the time. <laughs> I. That doesn't mean that they wouldn't like to have interiors. What, what would be more relevant is to have old pictures and any pre-restoration pictures he has. Well, the other thing um, that I did was to, well, we asked who had owned the barn before Norris bought it, and I don't have any of my notes, so I apologize. But I got that name, and then I talked with Jane Gribko, who gave me the name of a living member of that family who lives maybe in Northfield now, who might actually remember. So, um, but, but I, I, uh, I, I feel that I ought not to be reaching out without getting Tim. I sent that information to Tim. I think I should be getting his approval before doing, starting to nose around about his property. He has nothing. He has nothing in the way of early documentation. Somebody in the historical society did old photos of uh, photos of barns, I think. So there might be one. Yeah, or so there might there be There might be one and I'm trying to remember who has them. Um, I think they sent, I don't remember whether they're digital or not. Um, there was an idea at one point to do a, they, they did a Doors of Whateley poster and a, as a fundraiser, I think there was an idea to do a barn poster and it never happened. Um, Derricka might know and I'll look through my historical society file and see if I can find anything. There are a couple of area forms for that part of the world and I don't know if it's on that or not. It wouldn't have much in the way of description I think the river, I think the ones down there on River Road were just houses on that, on that end, on the south end of River Road. Uh, I, but I'm I not did, sure. Yeah, and I didn't uh, prepare on this subject for this meeting, but I believe I looked at all of that before I went over and, and could find nothing. So, um, all right. Well, um, The other, thing is, Go ahead. the other thing that would be helpful to know is if it's ever been moved, because the form will ask you that. Mm -hmm. That seems very unlikely, doesn't it? 
it, it's, it does, it's, but on North Street, they move barns all the time. So yeah. I, mean, I mean, this is sort of a double wide barn. <laughs> you know, it's, it's quite large. Um, and it also has the underneath, you know, the two story structure like a Vermont barn for the animals to go underneath. Um, not, not at all like a tobacco barn. So. Okay. All right. Well, let me, let me pursue that a little bit. Um, and I may be asking for some help. And Alan, we should, maybe we should just say a minute. Do you want to talk about um, the, the visit we made to the um, Waxik who bought Duda's barns, house oh, and um, barns? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> trying to remember now, it's been a while since we've been there. Um, I do have a bunch of photographs of the interior of the machine shop uh, up the stream from the from the first time I went when they're having a tag sale uh, before they took possession of the place. Uh, the barn behind the house seems to be usable, more or less. They're going to have to do some structural work inside to fix it. The house has been pretty well gutted, but the exterior is mostly the same, not entirely, but mostly the same. Uh, the garage- He, he put terrible there. windows in. Yeah. And they added a porch, which doesn't really- know. Fit just yeah. on porch, but you mean that deck thing in the back? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and the yeah. front part is not, definitely not original, but uh, they've added some stuff there. But the, the, for the most part, they seem to be trying to take care of it. And well, well and just a, a very nice young guy. The house was yeah. apparently so termite ridden that they had to they had to take it down to the studs and do work on it. You know, practically the day they took possession. Yeah, they had. More than one really? in there. Yeah. It was in bad shape. But it does have a lot of land. So yes. And his question to us, you may remember, uh, was is there any money available to do historic restoration in town? Um it, and of course there is not <laughs> for private property. Um, I, I do, I've said this before um, and I kind of have this in my head for perhaps when the town hall debt service is paid down, I, I'm personally interested in the possibility of setting up some kind of revolving loan fund or some kind of support for people who would like to do the right thing to the exteriors of their historic houses. Mm -hmm need some help um, and I and certainly other towns have set up funds using CPA money for that purpose you know with a lot of restrictions on them obviously so I, I don't have a proposal um, I, I guess I'm interested if other people are gen generally feel like that might be something worth investigating Why, why do you think that's better than having them come one by one? Uh, you know, I hadn't, I, 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 I haven't actually thought about that. Um, I, I suppose I thought that establishing a separate fund and and I probably was more inclined to something like a no interest revolving loan fund than an out and out gift, as some people would think of it to, to individual owners. I guess I thought it might be easier to gain approval of a principle of supporting historic preservation in town with some restrictions, obviously, on eligibility and location and type of building. All, all you can imagine the types of restrictions you might set up, then it would be to take an individual homeowner's case through the CPA, CPC review process. Or give me a homeowner can appeal to the, apply to this, uh, 
to CPC for that? I think so. I think, yes, I think so. We've just never done any, we've just never so, done anything like that, you know? I was gonna say that the eligibility requirements other than the political issue, which Donna mentioned, which is significant and uh, alone would get around a lot of it. Um, the eligibility requirements are that either you're in a historic register district or the historical commission finds that the building is of significant import to Whateley's history. And I would, it would be a good thing to research what other what people in other towns who do have these funds do because I'm not sure how you get around that, and without saying that every building over such and such age is historically significant. And, and it would uh, have to be it would have to be a number much higher than fifty, obviously. Yeah, I mean, I know we did yeah. it in we did it in Weston by saying that it had to be. <laughs> On, it also has to be for the public benefit for CPA money. So we said therefore that, or public good, I guess this is a better word than benefit. We said there that it had to be in a historic district or it had to be part of an important viewscape. And it had to be a very good example of its architectural period to try and narrow it down so that they, the people there were worried that anybody could just apply. Problem I think in this case is we're sort of hoping anybody would just apply. So did, I- Did, did I, I mean, we're talking about Weston, so maybe this is a ridiculous question. But did did uh, the Western guidelines apply any um, income level no. restrictions? No. Um, that's we, only them, we only used them on a couple of projects where where it was um, involved with affordable housing and historic preservation and the same thing. And one of them was a multi. I think they were both 40B projects. So there were apartments with a historic building as part of the complex, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. um, still. Well, it's interesting. Waxick, whose first name I'm, uh, I've lost, something like Nate, but it's not Nate, um, is he's actually more interested. I mean, I mean, he heard us when we said, sorry, there's no money, but um, he's actually more interested in saving his barn, his functional barn. But you could imagine that if he were interested in saving the mill site, which is, I think, probably not in danger of falling down, but could use some attention. I mean, it is the only surviving mill in Whateley, right? Uh, you know, maybe the only, almost the only mill building. No building, that's what I mean. Sorry. Yeah. There's another one on on Christian Lane, I think, down. Maybe. down uh, I don't know how much is left of the interior um, with some. Down. Yeah, this one had a new roof put on it at some point, a new metal roof. Right, but, right. But some of the equipment is still in it. You know, the wheels are in it and that kind of stuff. It's nice. Most of it, yeah, the turbine's gone. And all it's, that stuff. Um, well, well, well I, that might be very different. And and if you know, if he agreed to open it for public public display a few times a year, or to host events, or to give mill lessons, or yeah. So uh, why don't um, if, if if nobody's saying this is a terrible idea, why don't I? Follow Judy's suggestion. I'll ask on the historic preservation listserv for others who um, can ask. And I think we can also ask um, CPA. You always have to ask Stuart, right? That's the guy you <laughs> see if you have a question, right? <laughs> um, a lot of money might be useful too. I'm not sure what you have in mind. I'd start with the database. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
Okay, I'll do a little research on this because I really have been interested in it for a while and it just wasn't worth putting, bringing up when we were, um, you know, when we were putting $850,000 of CPA money towards the town hall. Um, and the, and the, two, the two cities that I think would be the most likely here are Cambridge and Springfield. And they're both active on the lister, especially Ralph Slate in Springfield. Uh, yes, I've already, I've already done some looking at what Springfield has been doing. Um, and they've been, they, this is irrelevant, but they set up a very complicated process and they're rolling back a little bit because the administration of it has been onerous. Um, but they are, but, but the main point, which is that Springfield has, has really been trying hard to save some of its historic buildings, which is great. Okay, I will look into that a little bit. Um, and there's no particular rush, I think, on that. So the Hidden History Project, um, Alan and Allison and I have been meeting um, every couple of weeks. And would either of you care to talk about where we are? Allison, would you care to talk about where we are? Alan. Alan. No, I said Allison. <laughs> Alan already oh, said. Uh, Alan sure, is yeah. Can you hear me okay? Because I, I hear a really long delay. Right now you're good, I think. Okay. I, I'm having trouble hearing you guys. Oh, We're having I'm trouble with Comcast here, so I don't know what's going on. All right, well, um, we've had several meetings with uh, uh, Alan and Donna and I, and um, we've been in conversation with a woman named Juliet Jacobson, who's a web designer, <clears throat> who's uh, done work on, um, she, she specializes, I think, in doing sort of historical kinds of clients. She's done work for PVMA and some other things that you guys might recognize she's in Ashfield and she has helped us sort out some choices about um, the technical side of how we go about doing uh, what we want to do, which I think has been really helpful. Uh, I think at this point we've settled on using the Google map construct. Um, which isn't where we started off. We had, we had really wanted to explore doing something a little more custom made, but in the end, it, it turns out that using Google is really gonna save us some trouble and be the easiest thing to do. Um, what would you guys like to add to that? Um, I, I would just say that uh, we met with Julia twice and she was very helpful in, this may, in that she pointed us at, four or five other websites once she heard a little bit about what we wanted to do. And I think um, looking at them and criticizing them and thinking about what they could do for us and you know, sort of what pros and cons were of the various ones um, was very helpful, at least to me. In and, having, cost. Um, and cost, yeah. yeah. And just yeah. having a clearer idea of what it was we were talking about. <laughs> I think what we've come down to is keeping things as simple as possible is probably the cheapest and easiest way to work. So, and strangely, Google is actually pretty simple and fairly straightforward. Though I think Allison is eventually going to make a map. Is that still part of the plan? I think that's off the table now, Alan, really. Okay. I think we've decided that that's just going to add more time and cost uh, for no appreciable and, and kind of reinventing the wheel in a way that I'm not sure there's a lot of benefit to. Yeah, you may be right. So. You know, part of what we discovered was so, there are enough options and um, design elements in the Google Maps that we will learn how to control and choose from that we can make this work just fine. 
If we were I trying mean, to win a design competition, maybe maybe that's not what we do. But that isn't what we're trying to do. We're trying to make a map that works that we can all maybe access and work on. I, so I think we're in a good place. Yeah, and we've worked through a, a number of the initial obstacles that we feared. For example, anybody who's used Google Maps knows you bring a map up of any area and you get a somewhat random set of pins that are local commercial enterprises because they paid for an ad at one place or the other. What we have determined both by checking with Juliet, and actually I'll tell you the second way in a moment, which is really kind of funny, is that we can remove them one by one. We don't have to have, you know, zone offs on there and that, and that kind of stuff. Um, I, that was one of my initial obstacles. But the funniest thing is that when we realize that you can Google how to remove pins from the Google Maps, that obviously Google lets you do that. Because you know, they're pretty big, well-run company. <laughs> and they wouldn't be letting you get to that if they didn't want to do it. We assume that's true. So I think they actually are pretty well-run. Um, so um, we still believe we will need some technical help for various details, not a huge amount of technical help. Um, but the other thing we've been doing, I don't know, Allison, do you want to talk about the outline or do you want me to talk about it? Sorry, I asked you to talk and now I'm yabbering. You talk about, you, you talk about the outline. Uh, the only other thing I was going to say is uh, one of the questions left to, to finalize is where does this live? Whose website are we co-oping? So that, and, that's and, still up in the air. Right, and, and Allison, you're reminding me that after we last Is it met, the Historical Society? Is it, is it the town? Yeah, and, and I, I would prefer, I mean, there's so much confusion about the Historical Society and the Historical Commission that I'd prefer not to add to that confusion if we can. But you're reminding me that I wrote right after the three of us last met, which was probably a week ago, Friday, 10 days ago, I wrote to Brian to say that I wanted to talk to him just to get a sense of how much capacity the town's website had to support something. And I will have to call him because right. he hasn't answered me. I knew, I knew this. Um, uh, so, um, so that's where, so it doesn't, may not sound like we're very far, but I feel that we are much farther along in understanding what we will be working on. Oh, and the other thing I did was to go back to, to trace Calla Jones down, uh, who is in Burlington, Vermont, and got a, a, a nice clear uh, account from her about how hers was built, which as I thought was with a fair amount of ex uh, talented external support. Um, Judy, I have asked you for a link to her actual map because you have on the Historical Society website her text, but no link to the map. And I'm, I'm I mean, I, I will get it from her. <laughs> you know? um, it's not in the I couldn't find it. You will find it and tell me that I'm wrong, but I I, well, I, I couldn't find it. It's too uh, long since I put it up, so I can't I can't remember. Okay, okay. Um, Another option for a website is the 250th. I don't know how long that will be up. Yeah, I was saying that thought crossed my mind, but that's not going to be that'll probably go away after the celebration. And I think this is something yeah. that we want to last. Yeah. Right, because we, I mean, most of what we've talked about and we've said from the beginning is we want this to be something that endures. And, and as we've been talking about subject matter and we actually had a great meeting with Derricka Smith on this about a week ago, just because it had been so long since Alan and Darcy and I sat down with her to talk about resources. Um, from the historical society that, you know, our notion is when we launch next June, we'll have enough material, you know, to be interesting, but that it ought to be something that can grow. So we've been thinking about topics 
what are we calling them? We're not calling them layers, we're calling them something. Um, some of them are kind of funny. <laughs> you know, some of them are more substantive. Um, Alan has mapped all the markers for the outside. Wait, of wait, wait, wait. Funny, funny is substantive. Okay, fine, fine, <laughs> fine. Um, and yeah. we're still working. We're still working. Funny is on good. It. Yeah, funny is good. Funny is good. Actually, funny gets closer to Susan's initial con concept of this thing. I think when you were talking about a game of some sort. Um, so I forgot to, you know, I said I was going to be ready. Do, should I share the outline? Do you want to see it where it is now? Why not? Yeah. Okay. We're so. It's going to take me a minute because I, I, I somehow didn't anticipate this and I'll have to get into my, um, I will find it. It is not in history. Oh, you will see all my files. Historical commission. Oh, we have historical commission files like crazy. And here we have this. Okay, so it must be version three. There it is. Can you see it? Not yet. No? Okay, now you're seeing my document. Now can you see? Shoot, why is it doing this? Let me oh, yeah. try again. I'm sorry. Yeah. Or do you want to just you know, talk us through key highlights? No. It'll be hard to read I'm, it anyway. It's not long. <laughs> I <laughs> mean, it's, it's, a work in, it's a work in progress. Oh, you want me to make it bigger? Yeah. Um, that looks fine to me. Your eyes are better than mine. Is that better? Actually. I'm going to, if I do it on the screen, I can see it better. Oh, what were you looking at, your phone? I have two screens going, oh, and because oh. the camera is on the smaller screen, so now you see... Are you looking at your screen. watch, Susan? <laughs> <laughs> so we're working on categories, Waitley Works, Waitley Booze. We need a better, I don't know, Waitley Conflict. We've actually got sort of interested in that. Um, last time we met, uh, Leisure Needs a Better Name, Waitley Mysteries. Um, and then as an alternate layers, we would tag things so you could bring up 18th, 19th or 20th century. So we're, you know, this is, this is not finished. This is what we're thinking about. Judy, your weekly emails have been great. I've been grabbing the ones that would, will lend themselves <laughs> to a place specific um, little story. Uh, the other things that we did, the other thing that we did is that Alan wrote up his cornerstones work with links to photographs. And I wrote up Mother George Road with links. And uh, we did that ages ago and discovered that we were thinking about quite different structures <laughs> for this material. And that was useful, I think. Um, we're now headed to few words and few, you know, images, newspaper clippings, that sort of thing. Um, so that's, I guess that's where we are. Very, Very cool. cool. Very good. Okay. So, and and we're. I think our next meeting is to, uh, well, to, to talk some more about structure, but also to at least go down this list and decide which of us is writing up or designing which of these content areas. And because I think I'm now secure enough about the platform. As although we have not finished everything to think we can turn to, um, to writing. But we do have a question. Um, and I guess, Susan, it's for you. 
Uh, we believe that we will we would benefit greatly from some more of time from Julia Jacobson and her partner. And the other thing that we need um, is we need more access to the, unfortunately you really have to use two different newspaper archival research services because they, one of them has the Springfield paper and one of them has the Gazette, you know, it's, it, they, they're overlaid. Um, Derricka Smith is paying for one of them herself right now, not the Historical Society. I have written to our librarian to ask if the town would consider subscribing to one of them. And I got a kind of, well, that sounds interesting, but I didn't get the sense of it. What's, what's a newspaper? <laughs> well, now I'm, I am trying to just, just the facts. I had no sense of an, an immediate response coming. So I guess, Susan, I'm wondering, oh, and I guess the other thing I should say is that whereas two years ago, when we started talking about this, we were thinking we had to have something printed. We now think there's, what could you print really? You know, so, so um, may we bring a request to the 250th for some programming support and maybe six months of newspaper archives research? Support. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. What I would suggest, sorry, it's echoing. Is you know, put put it together as a request with a, a line item budget, and we'll, if you can do that for our next meeting, um, which is I think it's the thirteenth, if that's a Monday of September, we can vote on it quickly and let you know. And, and you and Allison will both be there, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> if you it would be a useful reason. thing to have for all kinds of reasons. Yeah. What, Judy? Yeah. I was going to say, if you, if you know the period you want, the Historical Society has lots of paper clipping files, but neither Derek or I have been using them, so. Well, I, I don't mean to... I, I, Yes, and we should use those. But they're not, um, they're not indexed in any way. No, they're not. We, we, the nice not. thing about having the subscription is that it's a searchable database. You know, I found them terribly hard to use for what I've been doing, the recorder and the Gazette. Gazette isn't there at all that I can find. The recorder's there sometimes, so just, just beware. I mean, Allison does much better than I do with it, so I'm, I may be doing something wrong, or maybe I'm using the wrong one. Yeah, well, the, the, the news, newspaperarchives.com is the one that has the digitized microfilm from the various uh, incarnations of the recorder and all its different names. So that's the one that I think is the best okay. for us. But we should also have access to other local papers like the Springfield paper and the Northampton papers and even the... Berkshire papers are of interest. Right. And I now, which one was the one that you blessed it through with your week of free <laughs> membership? Which one? I did both. I did both. Did. And they're, they're offering me another free week. It's just that um, it becomes a little intense because as Judy knows, when you start searching around in there, you, you end up going down these rabbit holes you know, before you know it, it's three o'clock in the morning, you know, and the thing you started out looking for is not the thing you're now reading about. So, right, right. Um, and, and I do, you know, th these memberships are, you know, $100, $200. They're not terrible. Um, 80 bucks, right. 80 bucks, yeah. Uh, I, I actually do think it would be good for the library <laughs> to have access to this. I mean, surely there are students who do historical research you know, who, who oh, yeah. might want to use them. Um, so I will continue Please. to harass, uh, what's her name? What is her name, Cindy? Um, I wonder if the BPL database has it. Has the, say how incredible archival stuff. I'll, I'll check, because anybody can get an e-card to the BPL. Check. I mean, there are different ways to access these things and it becomes complicated. You know, if you have an ancestry.com account, which I don't, but lots of people do, you know, I think there are ways 
into those things through ancestry but it would That's be very Derek handy is. if we just had an account plus two but right it would well, be very right, handy if right we had now. an account for ourselves yeah if you're that we could well, all you know with it with we'd all get the same password and pretend to be the same person yeah and be able while to access the you know on, together while the pandemic is on the BPL, anybody can access, anybody with a BPL e-card can access Ancestry without going to a library. So if you wanna get through it that way, it's certainly doable. You don't need to go down to Florence or have a card at Florence. Or, or it's $50 a year for a Forbes library card if, if they have Ancestry. But a CW um, Mars card doesn't work. So if, if Ancestry is an option, they're, they're, it's cheaper than subscribing. I don't know if it gets you the right archival stuff, but it's it's cheaper. Well, that's I'm not a, sure it gets you the right papers, but. Well, Derek, that Derek, whatever Derek is doing, she's doing through her Ancestry or in connection with her Ancestry.com um, subscription. Um, she looks for people. He looks for people. Yeah. Which is right. right. Which ancestry will work for people? I don't think it would work for chickadee potato chips. No, sorry. It's that it's that the um, it's not that you use ancestry.com, it's that you get access to a lower subscription rate for whichever oh, newspaper see. archival I see. program she's using. Um, well, I, I'm going to continue to bother Cindy because <laughs> I think, you know, I think the town has a library and the library ought to have digital resources available for the town. Is this something that the friends, the friends can help with? Might this be something that they would support? I don't even know if the friends exist and the library has a budget. Okay. I mean, I mean the, really, we're talking about like a hundred dollars, you know, <laughs> so it's, I mean, their budget, our budget is $200. I'm sure theirs is larger. They, I mean, they, they have an accession budget. They pay and they, have, they, and they have digital subscriptions to other things. It helps her to have somebody ask because then she can make a case for it with the, for her budget. Oh, you think her budget is itemized? I know her budget <laughs> is itemized. But it can't be itemized for every single book she buys. No, but but if she if she feels that this is a splurge, and I don't know that this would fall in that category, but but I know it. If she finds it helpful, if there's a clamor, if if people are actually interested in having it, and it would be used, and if she could demonstrate that, whether she's not she's not the most aggressive. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you don't need to finish your sentence. <laughs> Um, well, she's, I have, she's, she's I uncomfortable have, taking initiative sometimes. Yes, yes, unless it's to buy a new paper towel holder, um, yeah. which we're, was we're being recorded. Uh, well, that was what she wanted to do with the Friends of Library support a year or two ago. Um, uh, so, do you think we need? I have expressed an interest. Do you think? Are you suggesting that more of you should express an interest, or? What, well, I wouldn't uh, all go the same day, the more yeah. the merrier problem. All right. Um, I am, okay, let me ask her whether she will be able to do this on her own or whether it would have to go into a future budget request and try to get a clear answer for that before we then do what I was thinking of doing, which is to just ask the 250th for a six month subscription to whichever one probably to the one Derica is not paying for, since she's perfectly willing to be helpful if we need her and, and use it more as a bridge. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Um, well then, um, other business, do we have other business? The RFI. Oh gosh, that. did I skip that? I you skipped did. the most important, what is wrong with me? Sorry, and you all let me skip it. Terrible, terrible. The center School with RFI. Um, so, uh, <laughs> very bizarre. Um, how many, I have read it, read it, 
Judy has read it. Have any of the rest of you looked at it? The draft terrifying. Okay. Um, well, the situation is that the center school visioning committee, I think it was called, made its recommendations nearly two years ago and recommended um, looking for developers who would be interested in uh, improving the building for a certain set of functions. I think you probably all remember this. Um, and then the pandemic struck, so the town has never issued the request for interest, which Brian now wants to do this week. And he asked for comments um, before the select board meeting on Monday. Um, I have a bunch of copy editing suggestions, which I will not bore you with. I'll just send them to him, you know, because really. Um, but Judy, you have one thing you want to bring up and I have something I want to bring up too. So shall I share your suggestion or do you want to? Well, let me first go back. 90% 90, okay. 90 of the, it's what he calls the executive summary is taken directly from the center school report verbatim. So if you're, so copy edits, they're probably more important, but I don't know. Anyway, that's there. They're, and one, what it does is review the survey that the center, the visioning committee did. So, which he calls the community desire. And he has an appendix with a full report, which I thought was, since the community didn't get much feedback or much enthusiasm for the select board, I thought was very nice. Um, and then he went through the zoning and the neighborhood and all, all what, what, they were trying to do. And he talks about among the statistics, the size of a lot. He talks, the one thing I thought he left out that probably might be helpful is that he didn't mention any preservation tax benefits. Or in, in, fact, fact, in fact, he actually asks the applicants, the respondents to note what they, to tell us what they know about possible funding sources, which yeah, so I, yeah. I, I, just something simple like to say this is a CPA community, right? Or, or, right. Um, and you might be able eligible for preservation tax credits. I mean that I don't know about that for sure, because what the visiting committee would like is for the for the developer not to own the building, but to have a long-term lease and, and uh, do most of the rehab expenses themselves. But anyway, so I drafted a little sentence basically saying that in, in the paragraph des describing the neighborhood, which, which also mentions that it's in a historic district, just something that's saying that that it is eligible for CPA funding for historic preservation and also would be for affordable housing and might be eligible for preservation tax credits, but period. So that's the only addition I had. I thought he did a great job, but then. Yeah, he, he did a good job. Um, but then we did the report, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's quoting the report, it's like patting yourself on the back. Yeah, um, Allison, you might be interested to, that he refers several times to Quan Quan Farm, just in that he actually twice in this short executive summary says how close the center school is to Quan Quan and the Waitley Inn and the town hall and the library. And he refers to you as, describes Quan Quan Farm as a wedding and other event venue. Um, you might want to be identified as a farm <laughs> as well. <laughs> you know, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't really matter, but it just surprised me a little bit. Um, right. Well, it's a little, no. He's he's trying. He's talking traffic, and um, once you start identifying one farm, you you run run into a long list. Well, if he's talking about traffic, we have quite a bit of you know farm traffic too. Yeah. But then you talk, then you have to add Nasami and Bay Pet, you know, and 
I don't think so. I don't okay. think so. He's talking, he, he identifies no, the commercial enterprises that are less than a quarter of a mile away. Yeah. That's, it's, it's, um, so um, Judy, I think this is, it makes perfect sense. And I, we can submit it in my view, either as an historical commission, or as you suggested in your email late this afternoon to me, you can just send it on your own. I, what's your preference? Well, um, since not everybody's read, read the report, maybe it'd be better if I sent it on my own. I, okay, that's I, fine. I don't, I don't really care, but it, it's, unless I think it'll have more weight if it's coming from us. I, I will say I have not read it thoroughly, but you know, putting it bluntly, I completely trust you. So okay. if you think it should be there, I'm willing to vote for that. Well, and I, 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 and I was it. surprised that it wasn't in there. And instead, we were asking them to show us whether that they knew about these things. I think we should be making life as easy as possible for these potential investors at this stage. Um, well, I guess the answer to the question is whether well, why don't you say what your your so comment. so I have I have not drafted anything, um, but I will. Uh, I'm going to take this down for a moment. Um, I uh, the document refers in several places to the milk bottle. I, I was I, I noticed it at first because in the very first section it there's a reference to the center school building and milk bottle. Milk bottle is lowercase with no explanation of what the hell the milk bottle is, you know, which, um, <laughs> uh, so that's a, that's a copy editing thing. But more importantly, although it mentioned, to, it says that the historical society owns the milk bottle. Um, what it doesn't do, now, now I'm bringing up, and I'm sorry, Susan, because I don't, maybe I can make this bigger, but it's a PDF. <laughs> Um, we wrote, this is from the Historical Commission, and said, um, oh, that just makes it harder to read. Well, we were supporting the letter from the Historical Society, and we wrote this in August of 2020, and said, we also support their request that the RFI stipulate that the milk bottle remain on site and that the society which owns the milk bottle continue to have sole access to the structure. That is not explicit in this RFI. And I, um, I think it should be since the presence of the milk bottle is noted as a significant factor. Um, so I guess I would perhaps ask that I also be trusted and just make, figure out where that might go and, and insert I, 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 the The select board did vote to to keep that status. So it's been approved. I would just remind, rather than trying to draft language and where it goes, I just suggest to Brian that it be included and let him figure that out. And why would you treat this differently than the, the text? Because it's kind of, I'm not quite sure how precise he wants to be about the selectman's vote, select board vote or how to phrase it. Um, all I right. The, the if I, if part, I, go ahead. There's no legal, there's no legal um, easement for access. I'm sure it would be written into a rent thing. Um, it's, it's, it's complicated technically, I think, and how much of that he wants to put in a cover, I don't know. So no, I think I think yeah, I understand that. I think the point about soul access simply to make clear that this is not an adorable artifact on the property that people can hang Christmas lights on or you know paint a different color <laughs> or something like that is, yeah. is the point. Um, uh, so I would, I would, um, I hope that you will support having me suggest something like that. It's fine sure. to say where it is, um, where it goes in the text. 
Um, the only other uh, the only other suggestion that is other than copy editing that I um, would like to make is that their photographs of different parts of the building and there's no photograph of the attic level, which has a great deal of potential for development, but I would make that as my own suggestion. It's got nothing to do with a historical commission. <laughs> Allison is writing, my computer just shut down. I'm trying to rejoin meetings. <laughs> um, okay. Are we okay with this? Should we stop? Okay. Um, so uh, anything else other than what I'd forgotten? Okay. Um, we are scheduled to meet next on Monday, September 20th. Uh, I am out of town unless it proves impossible to go to Oregon because of wildfires that week, which is still a possibility. Um, and my suggestion, since I know we can't move a meeting a week earlier because that uh, conflicts with your 250th meeting, Susan, my suggestion is that since I can't think of any business we know we will have by then, that we leave it on the calendar and confer the week before. And if there is an agenda, you can meet without me. And if there is no agenda, we can cancel. That is my proposal. We do a Zoom, you could attend. No, I will be on an airplane. Okay. Unless Delta screws up our schedule, which is likely, even probably more likely than the wildfires given the way yeah, what flying yeah. is like right now. <laughs> yeah. Fine with me. I'm fine with that. Yeah, okay. so, Maybe uh, to for Allison. Yeah, I'm going to, thank you. Um, Allison, their next meeting is September 20th. I am scheduled to be away and everyone else has just agreed that we'll leave it on the calendar and decide a week before. If we have an agenda, you can meet without me. If we don't, we'll cancel it. Is that okay? okay? All right. Okay. All right. Great. All right. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay. Stay dry. I'm still getting texts from you about your computer shutting down. <laughs> I just sent one. No, it's because I it's because I haven't opened it. It just popped up. Goodbye. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I just <laughs> no, no, crashed right. and I had to restart it. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. Take Bye. care, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank, Susan, thank you for taking minutes.